Well, then, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Damien Carroll. And I'm the devil. Now kindly undo these straps. If you're the devil, why not make the straps disappear? That's much too vulgar a display of power, Karras. Where's Reagan? In here with us. Your mother's in here with us, Karras. Would you like to leave a message? I see that she gets it. There are many possession horror films out there. There are so many that possession and demon movies have become a subsection genre in horror films, along with zombies, vampires, werewolves, ghosts, aliens, slasher, and possession demon films. Some are hits. Some are misses. And some you never even heard about. I don't know, maybe it's because I come from a religious family or because I'm a part-time paranormal investigator. I found this particular genre of horror films fascinating. So in April of 2023, two Possession Demon films were released in the United States. One, a new film called The Pope's Exorcist, and two, a reboot slash retcon of Evil Dead called Evil Dead Rise. You already know I was in. Let's look at the first one. The Pope's Exorcist is based off Gabriel Amorth, a real priest and exorcist of the Diocese of Rome, and is played by Academy Award winner Russell Crowe. The movie opens up in Italy where Gabriel or Gabriella is going to perform an exorcism on somebody who desperately needs his help. Yes, that's Russell Crowe on a Vespa. I never thought in my life I'd ever see Russell Crowe on a Vespa, and it's current day Russell Crowe. Well, anyway, once you get past that, the movie starts off with Russell Crowe being called to a small town in Italy because there's an exorcism that needs to be performed on a young man. After using deceitful tactics, Father Amor performs this exorcism successfully and extracts the demon from the young man. Because of his tactics, Father Amor gets in trouble with a church tribunal that wants to basically fire him and end the practice of performing exorcisms in general. But the Pope intervenes and tells him that he needs him for another mission. It seems a young boy in Spain is being horribly tortured and possessed on hollowed ground. And what happens after this is a series of events that will unravel a mystery behind something that the church has been keeping a secret for a long time. We also discovered that the demon possessing the boy is the king of hell, Osmodius. And if you want, we have that shirt for you available at ghostcrusadersmerch.com. That's ghostcrusadersmerch.com. There's a lot more to this movie besides what I just told you, especially with the devil or the demon that's possessing the young boy using things at Father Amor's past that he's already asked for forgiveness for and received, but using it again against Father Amor and the other priest that helps Father Amor during this exorcism, as well as the family members. Uh, it's I actually enjoyed this movie much more than I thought I was going to while I was watching it. About halfway into the movie, it gets a lot better than it was starting out. Starting out, I was a little iffy on the entire film, but as it progressed, especially in the second act, the, the going to the last act, I enjoyed this movie. I highly enjoyed this movie, actually. I really don't know why it was released in April. To be honest, it probably should have been released in October, as well as the next movie we'll talk about, Evil Dead Rise. Both of these movies should have been released in October, and they would have done a lot better. But... Uh, the Pope's Exorcist did do well overseas. All in all, the acting is pretty good. I thought Russell Crowe's quirky character was something he wanted to do and that he really was, didn't care about the role in the beginning. But as the film progressed, you actually see that, no, it's just, he actually developed his character into that and he does. It, it's a good performance in the end. Everybody gives a decent performance. I would say the best one is probably the little boy and the, his sister. They're the two best in the entire film. Besides Russell Crowe, and also uh, the other priest is he's okay. The mom is probably the worst. Actually, uh, no offense to her. I'm sorry, ma'am. I know people don't hear me things like this, but the mother was probably not the greatest actress. I didn't buy her as the mother of these kids. And I will say the movie lacked. This is some things that the movie lacked, and the movie lacked in focusing on the family, focusing on the mother, which is something we've seen other movies like uh, in this genre focus on more the family dynamic and really didn't focus on it that much 
yeah, we hear that this is, uh, they just had trouble. They just came from something traumatic. The wife lost her husband in a car accident, which the boy was a part of. That's made him easy and more vulnerable for the demon to possess him, especially since he hasn't been talking since the car accident, since his dad died. So they go to Spain because their father's relatives own this property and they want to fix it up and refurbish it so they can sell it and make a profit and move back home. The daughter is an angsty little teen that doesn't want to be there, but she's there because she, she has no choice. And this incident happens where the boy gets possessed. There's a lot more into this movie besides this. It's interesting. I did kind of roll my eyes at one point when I, I was like, oh, no. Is this church propaganda? But no. So the positive about this film, as I said, the acting was good. Russell Crowe was good. The second half was where the movie picks up and it gets better and it's more interesting. And uh, did they do anything new or different? Not really. Do they focus on... But they don't do anything to tarnish the, the lore and the actual things that happen during a real professional exorcism. So it actually stays faithful to things and... It was a decent movie. I I enjoyed it. I wouldn't say it was great. I would say it's a good movie, and I liked it. And I wished, maybe, I don't know. It didn't come out. I don't know. It's something. There is something missing to this because it's not a great film. It's a good film, and I like it. But there is something, and I don't know what it is. And I've been struggling with it, even since before this review, to find out what is missing from this. It follows the beats of every single movie. There is a time point where it jumps into a different genre of film for a brief second, for like maybe 10 minutes. And then it's cool and interesting, and then you're like, wow, this is a new thing. And then he uses Osmodius as a demon that's possessing him, and he's the king of hell. That's also interesting. Okay, so I've just been struggling with myself to give this movie a rating out of five stars. I went between three out of five and four out of five. I'm gonna settle on three and a half out of five stars. I think that's absolutely fair. I enjoyed this movie. It's not the greatest exorcism movie in the world. It'll never beat The Exorcist. It'll never beat a lot of other films. And sometimes some films people like that I don't like, right? Or I like films that people don't like. Like people didn't like The, the, the Exorcism of Emily Rose. I liked it. I thought it was interesting. I would have liked more of The Exorcism and not so much The Trial. But I highly enjoyed that movie too. With that being said, this is much better than The Exorcism of Emily Rose. So I give it three and a half out of five stars. This is a good movie. No matter how busy you ever got, you always found time for me. And I can't believe I'm never gonna speak to you again. Evil Dead Rise is another sequel slash retcon slash remake in the Evil Dead franchise. First, let me talk about Evil Dead in general, the, the franchise. I love Evil Dead. When I was a kid, I found the first movie, I think, on VHS in my grandparents' house. And then I found the second one later on, and it was just... I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I was a little upset. I'm like, what? That's not how it started. See, so every single Evil Dead movie was a retcon of the last movie. So this Evil Dead 2 tells the whole story of what happened to Evil Dead 1, but it minuses a few characters. And same thing happens with Army of Darkness. It, it tells you the intro, and the intro tells you everything that happened in Evil Dead 2 minus a few characters. So it's been constantly happening like this. So I really don't mind that this is a new remake slash retcon of the franchise. All right, so let's talk about Evil Dead Rise. The movie opens up with Beth. Well, it doesn't really open up with Beth, but let's just focus on Beth because the way it opens up doesn't really matter. So the movie opens up with Beth, who we discover is pregnant, and she discovers she's pregnant. And she's nervous, so she decides to go visit her sister, Ellie. Ellie is a mother of three kids, Danny, Brittany, and Cassie. So Beth goes to visit her sister, Ellie, to talk about this because she needs somebody to talk to about this because she's a little bit nervous. So Beth takes a flight down to L.A. only to discover that her sister is now a single mom, raising the three kids 
on their own that their building is basically condemned and it's going to be destroyed within a couple of weeks. And when Beth asks Ellie, why didn't you tell me about this? Ellie says, I did. I called and I left two voice messages. You were just too busy for me, which kind of makes Beth start thinking about, is she too busy to have a kid? Ellie senses that Beth really needs to talk to her. So Ellie then decides to send the kids out for pizza. And this is when everything happens. See, Danny's a DJ. He's also the oldest kid of Ellie's. And an earthquake happens. In California, that happens all the time, right? So an earthquake happens. And the ground floor, I think it was the in the garage, I'm not sure, breaks. And Danny could see a safe in the bottom. And it was told to us earlier that this building used to have a bank on the ground floor. So he sees the safe and he thinks, hey, there could be money there. We can get money and maybe get out of here and get a new place and help mom. So he goes down there while Brittany's scolding him, telling him, get back up here. He goes down and what does he discover? He discovers the Necronomicon and four vinyl records. Remember, Danny's a DJ, so he has the equipment to play these vinyls. He ignores the crosses and the St. Benedict medal everywhere. Hey, the St. Benedict medal. Guess what? We have that t-shirt at GhostCrusadersMerch.com. Yeah, the front and back of it at GhostCrusadersMerch.com. Check it out. He goes home. He tries to open the book, but he can't. Britain and him are arguing when he cuts himself. His blood drips onto the book and uh, opens it up because the book is not the same Necronomicon book. And the side has teeth. This one looks totally different. And once the blood hits the book, it opens. When he opens the book, there's images written in blood, like always, of what's basically going to happen in the movie. Danny decides to play the records, but he has to speed it up because for some reason the record player is too slow, even for these vinyl records. So as he speeds it up, he hears the incantation and then all hell ensues. I really like this movie and I like it because it is different. And we've seen Look, I like the 2013 remake also. We could have done another remake with uh, campers or something else different where campers go there and somebody finds the Book of the Dead and, and reads the incantation or plays the record and the incant is, and same thing happens because the same thing has to happen all the time. And yes, it's doing the same things as the Evil Dead 2013 version and as the original Evil Dead did a little bit. Nothing new, but it's fun. And it's entertaining, and I like it. And you know what makes this one a little bit more interesting for me? Is the kids. I think the kids elevates the film, and you, there's a greater sense of fear. There's a, you're more worried. You're scared because you're worried for the kids. And it, that adds to Beth's character because she's pregnant. She doesn't know if she could be a mother. And now she, this, now she has these kids that she has to take care of. Now... Is it perfect? No. It could have been a little bit better because there could have been a lot more people in the building, which the ending kind of is like, what? There was? A, uh, so it's just like this floor, or I don't know. It's, it's a little bit silly. But I highly enjoyed this film. I really liked it a lot. I know it's the same old, same old that we got from the last one, and they do try to put in a slapstick moment in here like they do with the Sam Raimi version because the Sam Raimi is really funny. Now, one of the reasons why Evil Dead 2, even now with this movie that I really like, really like, I like it, I think it's one of the best Evil Deads ever made. Now, that's my opinion. If I'm wrong, whatever. But Evil Dead 2 is still my number one, the best. Because I feel like when every time I watch Evil Dead 2, it was like the Deadites were really trying to drive Ash insane. Yes, it's slapstick, it's funny. His hand cuts, he has to cut off his hand and it runs around and gives him the finger and, and things like that. But also the moment where he f falls on the chair and the chair breaks and the uh, the deer head starts to turn and it's cracking and it looks at him and starts laughing. I love that. And everything starts laughing and it's just like insanity. And Ash is going absolutely crazy. And remember, this is right before those people come. He has no idea. He might think he's going insane. And it's the best moment. I love that. I love that. And I love that scene. That's the thing that's missing from these movies. We don't have that little bit. It's just like a generic zombie slash possession demon movie, but done better than a lot of other ones. I think the kids elevate this very a lot for me because it made me very nervous. And I wanted them to be protected like... Uh, Beth has to protect them and I feel like like Beth has to protect them but especially Cassie the most Cassie is adorable 
she's my favorite character in this. I think she's the next Dakota Fanning. She's a magnificent actress. Uh, just, just great. And it was, I was, uh, I'm not going to, I don't want to spoil anything, but oh my God. I don't know. I didn't know anything. I loved the movie. The movie was great. The acting was good. The, I loved every actor in this film. The mom was great. Ellie was great. I thought Beth and Ellie were actual sisters in real life. They were magnificent. Everybody in here was good except for the guys, but that's not, they were good, the neighbors, but they weren't like, well, like they were okay acting. They were okay. They were okay. They weren't terrible. They were good. They were decent. They were decent actors, but like, that's okay to have those side bullshits being decent and having your main characters being good actors. I liked every single person that I'm supposed to like. And uh, th this movie was, for me, very, very, very good. I will say the only reason why this loses points for me is that there's a moment at the end with CG that I was just like, oh God, man, if it was practical effects, it would look a little bit better. And also the beginning and the end really is irrelevant. The tag at the beginning and the tag at the end is, is stupid and irrelevant. I don't know why they added that in there. But besides that, I'll give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. You should go see this right away. You should go to the theaters if you haven't seen it already. I don't know when this review is going to be up. But maybe I'll put this review before my other stuff. But you should definitely go see this movie. I really enjoyed it. One of my favorite movies of the year. So anyway, those are two Demon Possessed films I reviewed. And if you like this video, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below what you thought about these two movies if you've seen them, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace. You don't look so good, Mom. Nothing a big old kiss from you won't fix.